Hi everyone. So this week I'd like us to look at what a restored relationship with God brings us. Joy. So hopefully you've read Psalm 32. Um, what, has, what struck a chord for me most in this psalm is the theme at the beginning and at the end of it. That God wants us to know and experience the wonderful fruit of being in a right restored relationship with him. The blessing he wants us to experience in knowing his forgiveness is joy. And it's that that I want us to set our minds and then open our hearts up to here. So the first and last verses of the psalm read like this. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. Confession, repentance and forgiveness is a common theme in the Psalms. And we see it throughout the whole entire Bible, stories of people feeling unclean due to their sin and in desperate need of receiving God's forgiveness. We see, too, that his forgiveness goes hand in hand with receiving his healing and restoration. And usually forgiveness comes first and then healing. I'm feeling unclean at the moment, not so much for anything I've actually done, but due to the fallen world that we live in. I'm sat writing this, having tested positive for COVID. Now, I have to admit that I foolishly and complacently thought God protected me for 18 months. I've been made safe and it stayed away from me and my family. Thank you so much, Lord, for your protection. But I can't now say, why aren't you protecting me now, Lord? I'm not immune to the ways of this world. None of us can escape feeling unclean at times in our life. I felt God was reminding me that deep down underneath, I was clean and perfect in his eyes. I was still exactly the way that he'd made me. Nothing had changed between us. I could still come to him and he was the same. He hadn't abandoned me. And I was reminded that we're not immune to sin either. It causes us to be unclean, but we can be washed clean because we're made in God's image. He created us with a beauty that brings him such joy when we come clean with him about our shortcomings that grieve both him and us. He wants us to be restored to our original purpose so that we can be in right relationship with him and know the fullness of life and joy that is prepared for us. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, you are God's masterpiece. What a joy we are to God. He is the master artist and he wants us to experience that same joy. It's a fruit of the spirit that grows no matter what muck and mire we've been in. And he can create a clean heart in us and renew our spirits. It would pain any artist if their original intention in their creation had been lost. If their choice of a certain shade of blue or red had become a dull or dirty brown or black through years of being tarnished with grease and grime. Let's think about this beautiful Sistine Chapel that the artist Michelangelo painted back in the 1500s. The restoration of the fresco paintings was one of the most significant of the 20th century. The cleaning that removed centuries of grime, dust and candle smoke had such a profound effect on art lovers and historians as colour and details that had not been seen for centuries were suddenly revealed. There was overwhelming joy at seeing what hadn't been seen for so long, at seeing what the artist's true original intentions were, at catching a glimpse of the beauty and joy he'd painstakingly created, something that he'd put his whole heart and soul and life into. And this reminded me of what it's like to be cleaned up by God, restored back to our true colours. What's needed to re-establish our fellowship with God is actually a choice made by us to come to him in true repentance and faith. Restoration adds to the preservation of something valuable to us, our relationship to God. True joy is the byproduct of being in right relationship with him. In varying translations, other words that describe the word joy in this psalm are happiness and blessed. And let's realise that joy is far more than a feeling. It's a deep, overwhelming experience of emotion, of knowing and being in right standing with God, of being all that we're made to be, of our cup overflowing with the blessing of a spiritual fruit that grows and lasts. In Psalm 126.3, it says, the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. And I love Psalm 30 verse 5 that tells us, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
let's not think that confession is easy, that conviction of our sins doesn't hurt us. It does. I've had many a dark night of the soul battling away and wiping tears, only to find in the morning, after I've journeyed through some pain, repented of my sins, that there was a great release and joy awaiting me. We can trust God with our sins. We can trust him to wipe our slate clean, just like the restorers of the Sistine Chapel would have put the trust in their tools and materials. And restoration takes time, patience and a willingness to take that step of faith. At the start of Psalm 32, David writes, the joy that we'll receive. And at the end of the psalm, the joy that we'll express when we repent and confess our need of God's love and mercy and total forgiveness. And the rest of the psalm focuses on showing us the how and why we need to do this. I think sometimes we can be wired to wonder, so what's in it for me when it comes to decision making? Especially decision making that require that can require our stubborn hearts to take notice and be corrected or rebuked. It's just as important to consider the result of our effort. The motive should be that we confess because we know it's the right thing to do, because we love God, because we want to be set free from sin. And because our reward will be joy. Allow that to be your motivator. In Psalm 51, 12, David writes about his confession to God after he'd sinned with Bathsheba. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. He knew what needed restoring in his heart. And he knew a real lack of joy and connection with God because of what he'd done. We can be restored back to the masterpiece our creator made us to be. With the true colours he designed and chose for each one of us. His joy over us is to be our joy too. Put simply in the words of an old Scottish proverb, confession is good for the soul. Try and hide it, and as we read in this psalm, we'll be worn out, wasting and groaning away, feeling the weight of God's discipline and our strength diminishing. God designed it to liberate us, release us and restore us so that we're free to experience the fullness of joy in all our relationships. If confession is good for the soul, then joy is the medicine and tonic that we need and receive to heal the soul. In the words of John 15, 11, I've spoken these things to you that my joy may rem might remain in you and that your joy may be made full. What a blessing it is to know that we can come back to God again and again to be restored. And the more restoration that goes on in us, the greater our joy and the greater our joy the more we're becoming more like Jesus. And the more we're becoming more like Jesus, the greater joy God brings us. This restoration of relationship with God should flow through and be reflected in all our relationships at home, work, church, in our everyday lives. Inspired and meaningful fellowship with each other and with God brings joy. Hebrews 12, 2 says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Wait expectantly for that joy to be yours. Endure and be willing to come to the foot of the cross when God convicts you to turn and return. Let the guilt and shame wash away and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that is joy. So what we find here in this psalm especially is a ray of hope. Overcome by an awareness of our sin, here we find it possible to share with God the depth of our sorrow and repentance as well as knowing the height of joy at being forgiven. Over centuries, Christians across the world rejoiced in the knowledge that God would respond to confession with complete total forgiveness. On this side of the cross of Christ, we now live under grace, and we can rejoice even more because we understand more. God has shown us that he's willing to forgive because his judgment on sin was satisfied by Christ's death on the cross. Jeremiah wrote in his 31st chapter, entitled Hope for Restoration, that the foundation of this new covenant in Christ was revolutionary, offering a unique personal relationship with God himself, with his laws written on individuals' hearts instead of stone. And for us today, this covenant is here. We have the wonderful opportunity to make a fresh start and establish a permanent personal relationship with God. And that in itself should bring us immense joy. <laughs>